You're watching HFO TV. Welcome back to HFO TV. I'm Aaron Kirk Douglas, Marketing Director. With me today is Greg Frick, partner at HFO. And today we're going to be talking about the apartment market and Greg's take on what is happening right now. Why, thank you, Aaron. Can Good you to tell see you again. <laughs> you too. Can you tell me what's happened since we last uh, did this kind of an update? And that was probably the fall of 2012. Well, we've seen a lot of the same. Uh, interest rates have gone up. That's probably the biggest change. We've seen uh, the T-bill rates have gone up about 100 basis points since November of last year. So that's put a big pressure on underwriting of these properties. Mm -hmm. From an occupancy standpoint, vacancies have stayed low. Historically, we've been the last two years in the top five or ten in the nation in low vacancy rates, and we continue to be in that place. Well, we are seeing a big change, I think, from when we talked last year to where we are today is where are rental rates going to go. You know, we hit a peak in rental rates. We're not seeing the rental growth that we saw in 2012, so that started to come back a little bit. Um, it's not really due to demand, I think. It's just due to there's more units in the market and it's just taking time to absorb some of these units. So overall, the market's still very strong. Uh, we just are maybe not looking at a growth rate of here on rental, it's maybe tempered down to more of a normal growth rate. So yeah, that's kind of where we are on the operation side. On the investment side, still a lot of money trying to get into Portland. Uh, we're definitely on the map as a place to be for your investment dollars and apartments. On the uh, institutional larger side, you know, we've seen cap rates as low as I've ever seen. And I don't think that's going to change. I think we've probably hit a bottom for cap rates. On the non-institutional, uh, same thing. A lot of money looking for places to go. And apartments are kind of the it investment right now. Um, so that's kind of where we are today. We still have the urban growth boundaries. So we don't have urban sprawl here as we see in other sub-markets. Or other markets, excuse me. I think what will be interesting is, you know, if you have a 100 unit and you got a brand new 200 unit built next to you, there may be some softness in your rents. Short window, yeah, there's going to be some effect on that. That may be part of the reason why we haven't seen the rent growth as we see these new units coming online. Long term, though, we're still not up to where demand is, is uh, pencil to go. So I think we're just kind of building up to it. Uh, the other kind of interesting thing on new construction is that lenders have really pulled back on who can get um, a construction loans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back of one of the, you know, Famous investor here said, you know, it used to be if you had a, part, a, a pickup truck and a dog, you could get a construction loan. Those days are gone. So now you've got, you have to be very well healed, well funded, strong builders. So that's also limiting the number of kind of new projects. I mean, if you look at the fundamentals, you would think Portland should have more than 7,000 units coming online. You get the lowest vacancies in, you know, in the country, rental rates have been growing, we still have the migration, but that's not the case. Part of it's due to the urban growth boundary. Part of it's due to, uh, you know, getting entitlements is not an easy process. And then on top of that, you know, there's not that many people out there that can build apartments anymore after what happened in 09. So, uh, yeah, it's going to have a little bit of effect, but I think overall we're still going to be a healthy market and we're not going to get into a oversupply uh, scenario as fast as you would typically see in the cycle of real estate. Is there a, a part of town that you're seeing most of these new apartments going in? Uh, clearly two sub-markets. It's uh, close in on the core. Uh, it's definitely been the driver for new construction. And then we're also seeing a lot on the west, larger complexes on the west side. You know, everybody wants to get, you know, closer to downtown, closer to, you know, where the, you know, the Gen Y population wants to be, you know, less parking, amenities, nightlife, shopping, things like that. So it's in the core and then out on the west side uh, due to Intel. So the market fundamentals are very strong mm -hmm. and there are a lot, there are just a lot of variables. Um, is, would you say this is a good time to buy or a good time to sell? Well, you know, usually it's one or the other, though I think right now I can, we're kind of on, I think it's both, which is kind of an interesting thing. How can you be a good time to sell and a good time to buy? You know, I think it's a good time to sell if your time horizon is five years and shorter. I don't think you'll ever see cap rates as low as we see now. So if somebody were to say, hey, I, you know, I don't see us owning this, wanting to own this for the next three to four years, this may be the opportune time to sell. Cap rates are low, buyers can get attractive interest rates still, and uh, you know there's a lot of money looking for deals. So on that standpoint, it's a great time to sell. Flip side, it's also a good time to buy if your horizon's long. If you've got a 10-year horizon, you can get interest rates that are still historically low. I mean, we're in the 4% range. We're still not in a market of oversupply, and we still have demand coming in. So you can get in, you can lock your rate in, and ride it out. So no, it's, believe it or not, I think it's a good time to buy and a good time to sell. So. All right. So Greg Frick, partner and uh, 
mostly snappy dresser here at HFO joining me today and uh, we'll see you again next time at HFO TV. Mostly snappy dresser? <laughs> mostly. Yeah. Thanks for watching HFO TV. To learn more about HFO, call or visit our website. See new listings, apartment news, videos, and more when you download our apps at the Android and iPhone markets.